Hello, my name is Edwin Rutsch and I'm the director of the Empathy Center located here in beautiful Santa Barbara, California. The center's mission is to build the empathy movement and to raise the level of empathy in society through education and community building initiatives. And my name is Anita Novak. I teach at McGill University and I'm the author of Purposeful Empathy, a book that invites readers to turn up the volume of empathy in their lives. And at the beginning of 2024, Anita and I co-hosted the Empathy Summit uh, brought to you by the Empathy Center and more than 40 authors of books about empathy participated. They shared what their book was about, why they were motivated to write it, and what they hope readers will take away. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope you'll buy their book. We have our is next speaker. Lori is a William Griffin professor of uh, psychology or philosophy at Wells Lian, uh, Wesleyan, I guess, University, where she co coordinates the Wesleyan Animal Studies. She is the author of Entangled Empathy and Alternative Ethic for Our Relationships with Animals. I really enjoyed the book. Some really great insights there. So uh, the floor is yours, uh, Lori. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to um, describe myself for those who might not be, who might be listening but can't see. I'm a white presenting woman with gray hair, wearing purple glasses and a black and purple scarf sitting in front of a rather bland background. Um, uh, as Ed just said, I'm a philosopher and I have been involved in the growing field of animal studies, which is an interdisciplinary area of studies that really focuses on human relationships with other animals. Um, and in the area of animal ethics, which is in the part of philosophical investigation that I'm engaged in, um, there's been, and animal ethics is also a part of animal studies, there's been a dominant trend that starts with the idea that the capacities that make us matter from an ethical or moral point of view um, and that are valuable to us are the kinds of capacities that generate interest, um, concern, and care um, for other animals. So there's this idea that we have to extend our boundaries of moral concern beyond the human, and that extension is based on various capacities. Now, this approach is what I call the traditional approach in animal ethics, um, and it's a highly analogical approach. Um, and it's based fundamentally on caring about or considering others that are similar to us. Now, obviously similarities um, exist all over the place. I'm not denying that there are all sorts of important similarities that we should attend to and notice, but it struck me that this is a fairly limited way of thinking about our relationships um, with each other and with other animals. And so I developed an alternative ethical point of view um, that is, uh, I hope, a way of getting a past the kind of limitations that exist um, with these more traditional approaches. Um, so part of what these more traditional approaches recognize is that, or the, some of the problems with these traditional approaches is that it overlooks, these traditional approaches can overlook what matters from another's point of view. Um, it's also focused primarily on human uh, capacities. And so the unique other kinds of capacities that other beings might have get lost in the assimilation. And so I developed entangled empathy as an alternative to um, this kind of ethical framework. And I saw that um, Ed suggested holding up the book. This is the little book, Entangled Empathy. Um, and basically there um, are important thoughts that I had hoped to share in virtue of developing this alternative approach. The first is that we need to recognize that we are already in ethical and unethical relationships to other animals. Making these relationships ethical requires a way of trying to understand the perspective of these others. And I argue that understanding um, is best achieved through the process of entangled empathy.
So let me just say a little bit about how I understand entangled empathy first. Um, and then I want to just share some of the um, more expansive ways in which I think entangled empathy can be taken up um, beyond just thinking about our relationships with other animals. So what I what I think of as entangled empathy is quite distinct from more traditional ways of thinking about um, empathy. So if you think about many of the ways that empathy have been described or have um, been talked about even today, and in the other summits that have occurred, you usually have this thought that what empathy is doing is it's kind of a form of psychological inference in which what we're trying to do is use our observation, our memory, and our knowledge, and our reasoning to yield insights about the thoughts and the feelings and the experience of others. Now, one of the things that, and I think that's a fine way of thinking about empathy. I'm not being critical of that way, but I'm doing something more in thinking about entangled empathy. When I'm talking about entangled empathy, part of what I'm thinking is that there is a blend of emotion and cognition that culminates in what I call caring, a form of caring perception. And that form of caring perception is another way of thinking about um, entangled empathy. Now, a couple of features of entangled empathy that I want to highlight um, are that you in entangled empathy, it's absolutely crucial that there be a distinction between the self and the other. And it's important in thinking about that distinction, not because we want to make the other a particularly, um, to any, any, uh, value differential there. It's simply that there needs to be a point of view from which one is empathizing and someone with whom one is empathizing so that we're not simply projecting our own view onto the other. This is something that I think is really important and is to some extent, I, d I don't want to generalize here, but I think that many people believe that empathy um, can often bring us into a one self or a whole self, bring us together in that way. And I think it's important not to, at least not to start there because of, fundamentally we are in very different positions based on gender, gender expression, sexual orientation, race, class, and species. So these differences are, I believe, important and valuable to recognize and honor um, rather than trying to reduce everybody to the same sort of container that has various sort of similarities. Fundamentally, what's at stake for my thinking about entangled empathy is that we're trying to enhance well-being. And we're trying to enhance well-being both um, our own well-being when that's possible, but also the well-being of those with whom we're empathizing. And as I said, this is a really important way of thinking about um, animals, but it goes beyond animals. Now, what does it take? What are the steps? What are the, the tools? What are the sort of upshot of trying to engage in and cultivate entangled empathetic perceptions. Well, one of the things that I think is absolutely crucial and an insight that I bring out in the book is that we really need to develop our perspective taking skills by focusing on the particular concerns, vulnerabilities, sympathies, likes, dislikes, fears, hopes, dreams of the other, those very particular ones. So part of why I said earlier that I didn't want to be generalizing is I think that the, we're, we're stuck generalizing all the time, but ultimately I think generalization is a block to um, entangled empathetic um, engagement. We also, I think importantly, and this is something that um, is, is crucial to my thinking about entangled empathy is that we're in relations already with so many others. So these relationships could be good or they can be bad, um, but we're already in these relationships. Um, and by that, I mean, not personal relationship. You might've heard my little dog barking in the background, my personal relationship with my dog or my personal relationship um, with other humans um, are 
clear and we understand those relationships much better, but we're also in much more distant relationships, um, but relationships nonetheless. So um, this is part of the entanglement idea of entangled empathy. We're in relationships with the people who are in the factories producing the goods we purchase. We're in relationship with the animals that lead to food production and their habitats that are being destroyed. Those are all relations that need to come um, into play when we're thinking um, about entangled empathy. Ultimately, my thinking about entangled empathy um, and why I wrote the, the book is that no one, I believe, um, would endorse the idea that I'm in a bad relationship with so-and-so or such-and-such, -and, and that's okay. That's One fine. minute. One minute. Yep. Um, and so we are in these relationships and we can nobody would endorse the idea that we wouldn't want to make them better. And so ultimately, I've been developing the theory and the view of entangled empathy as a method for thinking about how to both perceive those relationships, but also ultimately to make all of our relationships with other humans and with other animals better. Thanks. Ah, thank you so much, Laurie. Great to see you uh, again.